and welcome back again here in the off-grid garage with another capacity test video yes as i promised before this is the cell which came with the carlotta and we have measured this one before with 265 ampere hours out of 280 and we have used this second capacity tester which uses a shunt so 265 ampere hours out of 280 and today I want to measure the same cell again with the other tester and see if there's a difference actually. So this one is fully charged at 3.65 volts and it's still pulling 100 milliamps. So it's 100% full. I will disconnect the charger now and will give the battery a rest of one hour as per the specifications. And then we hook everything up to the all-in-one tester. Okay, while this battery is resting now for one hour, I will set up the tester and then we can start straight away. Okay, it is now almost an hour ago since I disconnected the, char the, um, the charger from the battery, yes. Uh, let's fire up the tester. Welcome, thank you. And this is the capacity test of the other battery we had before. It's nice to see it saves all the information, even the power was off. Okay, let's do a full reset here. 3.61 it shows, but I think I just measured here 3.64, yeah, 3.65. So it hasn't lost much voltage over this hour, 3.61, but we are looking after the ampere hours and let's start the test. 80 watts. And here we go. As always, I'll keep you informed. I'm, I'm not staying here with a tester like the first time and watching all these numbers climbing for hours and hours. I've got other things to do. One of the uh, MPPT charge controllers has arrived. I just hooked it up. It's hooked up to the internet, to the router up there. So this one looks really, really good. And well, just expect more videos about this charge controller very soon. All right, folks. 139 ampere hours done after six hours eight minutes and let's measure the voltage here 3.26 3.25 right in the middle between 3.3 3.2 so going strong it's got a good feeling well i tell you what capacity testing does get a lot less exciting after three times just passed the 180 ampere hour mark we are eight hours into the test and of course you want to know the voltage 3.25 still going very strong i say this all the time but the battery is very strong still it's amazing it is now after 8 pm already dark outside and we have just slipped under the 3.2 volt mark and we've got 230 ampere hours um, I'm not that confident anymore that we really get 280 out of this battery but I may be wrong who knows Okay, I'll be back in an hour and see how we go. So it's one hour later. We've got 260 ampere hours and we are under... No, wait, this is not right. Let me measure correctly. I just came back into the garage and saw this voltage and say, oh shit, we are under three volts already. No, we are not. <sighs> I forgot the bottom buffer of these batteries <laughs> we are at 307 well that is hang on there you can see it 307 260 i've got a bad feeling i've got a bad feeling this is another 20 ampere hours another hour of runtime with this load i don't think we can make it we've got 307 volts and 20 ampere hours to go that is a lot to ask for holy shit. Come on, come on. 260 ampere hours. 
The last time we measured, we had uh, 265 ampere hours. So this would mean if we get more than 265, that's a progress. But it's a different tester. I'm not sure if Carlotta 8 can make it until 280. <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't think she can. Uh, well, guys, half an hour later, and we are down to 2.84 volts. So it's going down quickly. I have to stay with the battery now and disconnect when we reach 2.5 volts. Do you want to know how much ampere hours we have? Probably not. All right, folks, we are very close, 2.56. 2.50 is the cutoff voltage. There we go. Another 10 millivolts. There we go. 2.5 volt. I am turning off the load. Yep. All right. As always, the result is here. 12 hours, and we have pulled. 846 watt hours out of this battery which is ta-da 270.9 so 271 ampere hours out of this battery instead of 280 <laughs> i'm not i'm not sure if i should be happy about this result or if i should be disappointed the battery should have 280 ampere hours as a typical capacity, right? And this time I have followed all the rules. I charged to 3.65 volts. I gave the battery a rest of one hour as per the specifications. I discharged to 2.50 volts and the capacity is 270 or 271 ampere hours. So we are nine ampere hours short. That is 3.2% less capacity. Well, do they give me 3.2% discount? I'm on the fence. <laughs> to jump on the manufacturer, to jump on the shop where I bought these batteries. But I've tested only Carlotta 8 so far. I haven't tested any other batteries apart from these two. This was number one. This is one of the first delivered, 279. 271 I've got 14 more batteries here in the box Do I need to test them all? Am I just picky here? Should I just balance them and put them in the box and start charging and using them? Let me know in the comments below. I know you will. I know you will. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm a bit shocked. I was hoping for a better result here for a far better result than 271 bloody light because we are using the other tester you know the te then i really thought this tester here with the shunt must be far more accurate than the chinese all-in-one tester we are using but this one showed less ampere hours drawn from this battery because this one this one measures the the voltage directly at the terminals so we don't have any losses at the cables here but apparently this one shows more ampere hours than this one. So I like this one more. <laughs> it's not funny. Seriously, what are we doing? What are we doing? Are we testing all these? I also thought about the temperature with all these tests um, because we had some rain the last couple of days and it has cooled a little bit down. It's, that's why I'm wearing a shirt, actually. Um, at the moment here, this battery here, 25.7 degrees or... 78 Fahrenheit. Um, the other tests before were with a little bit hotter battery. Usually these batteries perf perform better when they are warmer, hotter. So now we've got a colder battery and we're still getting 271 ampere hours. So six ampere hours more than with the other test, with the other tester. I don't know. It's too complicated. I shouldn't have used the other tester. I should have used only one tester for all the cells to stay comparable. Okay, before we go, let me just quickly show you something here. 
I've pulled up the C rate curve of the specification sheet they are providing for these battery cells. And this graph shows you the capacity in relation to the voltage for different discharge currents. And usually, as you know, when you discharge your battery with a high current, you get less capacity. And this is mainly because of the internal resistance of the cell. So basically, we've got a resistor inside. Well, that's how you can understand it. So very similar to the losses on the cables, we have got losses inside the battery, which we cannot measure directly. But also for these internal losses, but also for these internal losses, we can say the higher the current, the more losses you have, the more power you are losing. And these are mainly chemical processes inside the battery, which are getting, well, worse when the current is higher. And this is usually called heat loss. And this is why the battery gets warm. When you have a high current going into the battery or out of the battery, the battery gets warm. This is what we can feel. This is the internal resistant, the voltage drop on the internal resistance. And because these cells have a very low 0.15 milliohms, very low internal resistance, it does not really matter too much what kind of current we discharge the battery with. And you can see this directly here on the C-rate discharge curve they are providing. See the bottom curve here, this is 1C. 1C means we are discharging this 280 ampere hour battery with 280 amps and the battery would be empty after one hour. But they also provide the information for 0.1c, which is the black curve. And of course, when we discharge with a lower current, we've got less internal heat losses. So the battery can deliver more capacity to the outside load. But as I said before, the internal resistance is so low, you can see all these curves, regardless of the, of the discharge current, are coming together in one single point almost on the curve. And when we go in here and zoom in, see over here at the end, this is where all our rainbow colors come together. This is where the magic happens, so to speak. The spreadsheet says 280 ampere hours at 0.5 C. This is the purple pink curve um, it right in the middle. This is 280 ampere hours. But the black one is just a tiny, tiny bit more on the outside onto the right. So we should get actually more capacity than 280, right? And we are not even discharging with 0.1c. We are using only... So 0.1c would mean one-tenth of 280. Quick maths. Exactly. 28 amps. This would be the discharge current to meet one C, uh, 0 0.1 C. And this tester, this tester is pulling only 23 amps. So we are at 0 0.08 C. So even less current. The lower the current, the more capacity you've got available to drive your load. So in theory, with this test here, we should get actually more than 280 ampere hours out of these batteries. So I'm not sure what we should do now with these test results or these three capacity tests. Should I continue or not? That's the big question now. <laughs> all right, guys. Anyway, I'll leave this all with you now. Uh, please leave your comments. You do this anyway. So thank you so much again for all your comments, all your help on this channel. You're helping each other out. You're helping me out. So we are sharing all this information here together. It's so great. It is so much fun and I really enjoy making these videos for you and reading the feedback then and continue making videos for you, of course. And it is again close to 11 p.m. in the night. So we shall see us again in the next video very soon. Thanks again, guys. See you then. Bye bye. <music>